Today's message is I Shall Not Want. It's part two of our series on the 23rd Psalm. And my memory verse for today is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 12 to 13. I have learned, Paul writes, the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. May the Lord bless us as we read his word. Last week, we began this series on the famous shepherd psalm, the 23rd, by talking about the fact that when we say that the Lord is my shepherd, we are admitting that God is both our source of provision and the object of our submission, that we acknowledge not only that Jesus is our Savior, but also that he is our Lord, and we are his sheep. Today, we continue by looking at one of the results of having that relationship with our Creator, an attitude or confidence that recognizes that because the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. After World War II in Europe, one of the problems that was encountered was the large number of children who were orphaned and homeless. Large camps were set up to be sure that kids were well-fed and cared for, but early on they discovered a major problem. The children had trouble sleeping at night. They were restless and afraid. Finally, a psychologist solved the problem. The children were suffering from insecurity, from the fear that they would not have what they needed to eat the next day. The solution was met by giving each child a piece of bread that they would be given before they went to bed, not to eat, but to hold on to. Assured that their needs would be met, the children were able to sleep through the night. When David wrote the 23rd Psalm, he knew that when sheep have a good shepherd, They need not worry about what they will need for the next day. The good shepherd has already planned where he will take them for the next day's grazing. And sheep do not need to beg the good shepherd for food. He knows their needs, and they know they can trust him. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, is a statement of fact and a declaration of this trust. Matthew 6, 8 reminds us that God knows what we need. Jesus said, your father knows what you need before you ask him. Long before we had needs, God provided for them. He placed coal and oil and and gas in the earth to heat our homes and power our machines. He placed life in the seeds and fertility in the soil so that we could raise our food. Because the Lord knows our needs and loves us, Jesus says in Matthew 6, verse 25, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in the barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Jesus called himself the good shepherd and said a good shepherd cares for his sheep and will lay down his life for them. And that's why the Apostle Paul could confidently write the church at Philippi in Philippians 4.19 and say, My God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. In his book, Traveling Light, Max Lucado describes a prison named Want. The prisoners there all want something, something bigger, something nicer, something faster, something thinner, something newer. That something may vary from person to person, but the thing that remains the same is they all believe that having that one thing will make them happy. One new job, a new spouse, a new car, a new house, just one thing. And in fact, there usually is a surge of happiness if and when they obtain that thing. But the luster wears off very fast, kind of like Christmas toys on Christmas morning for kids. And there's a newer car, and there's a more attractive job, a bigger house, a more desirable potential mate. And before you know it, they're back in the prison of want again. And it's the same old story. They believe that this one thing will make them happy, but of course, it won't. When David says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, he is saying, what I have in God is greater than what I don't have in life. I'm content. 
That's the real point of the statement, I shall not want. I'm content. It's not that we shall never find ourselves lacking. It's that we have learned to be content. Paul, who knew his share of suffering during his lifetime, wrote in Philippians 4, verse 11, I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. He knows that in the shepherd's care he shall not really want. Think of all the stuff you own, your house, car, money, jewelry, stocks, clothes, all the stuff. And now realize, Max Lucado says, number one, your stuff isn't yours. John D. Rockefeller was one of the richest men in our history. He started Standard Oil Company, and when he died, a man asked his accountant, how much did John D. Rockefeller leave behind? And the accountant answered, all of it. You may not realize it, but sooner or later, your stuff isn't yours. And secondly, realize your stuff isn't you. In, second, in Luke chapter 12, verse 15, Jesus said, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. That's not what your life is. Your stuff isn't you. We may judge people by the cars they drive, by the houses they live in, or the clothes they wear, but 1 Samuel 16, 7 says, The Lord does not look at the things that people look at. People look at the outward appearances, but the Lord looks at the heart. Max Lucado warns that if you define yourself by your stuff, you'll feel good when you have a lot and bad when you don't. The kind of contentment that Paul talks about in Philippians 4 is based on the being able to trust God's loving provision in whatever circumstances you find yourself. Philip Keller, in his book, A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23, points out that when David wrote, I shall not want, he meant more than just, I shall not lack what I need. It was more than material goods or getting proper care and direction. It also meant I'm content with my shepherd's care and I don't need anything else. David, like many great leaders of the church, certainly knew times when he was deprived and going through tough times. His father-in-law tried to kill him. His son led a rebellion against him. And for a time, he lived on the run and had to hide and live in caves. The fact is, many who follow Christ have to suffer persecution in tough times. And Jesus made it per perfectly clear that it would be this way when he said, In the world you will have trouble, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. It's a fallacy of the prosperity gospel so prevalent in the world today to think that God blesses all his children with financial material prosperity. So if you are financially successful, God must approve of you. And if you're having tough times financially, it's a fallacy to believe that it can be blamed on a lack of spirituality on your part, that God is punishing you. Linking prosperity to God's approval makes it possible for people to feel no obligation to help the poor the way the Bible so clearly demands. It allows us to think that poor people don't deserve our help. But Jesus lived and ministered among the poor and said that when we care for the least of these, we are caring for him. And it was the rich young ruler he turned away. And in Revelation 3.17, he tells the church that felt it was rich and in need of nothing, that it was condemned as wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Prosperity in the worldly sense does not equal God's blessing necessarily. Many who are rich in this world's goods are unhappy prisoners of want, buying houses and swapping spouses, growing portfolios and growing toys and possessions, using drugs and alcohol and using people, but never finding peace. And yet I know many people who have almost nothing in this world's goods who have a joy and a peace that is beautiful. It's like an old song I used to sing says, I found the Lord, so a rich man am I. It was not material or physical possessions that David had in mind when he said, I shall not want. It was the attitude that because of who my shepherd is, I have all that I want. His grace is enough. Are you hoping that a change in circumstances will change your attitude? If so, you're in the prison of want. How would you fill in this statement, Max Lucado asks, I will be happy when, would you say you'll be happy when you're healed, when you're promoted, when you're married, when you're single, when you're rich, 
Whatever it is, let me ask you this. If your ship never comes in, if your dreams never come true, if your situation never changes, could you be happy? Have you learned that what you have in your shepherd is greater than what you don't have in life? Contentment should be the distinguishing, distinguishing characteristic of the man or woman who puts his or her life in the hands of God. As Paul says, I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, because I can do all this through him who gives me strength. You may not have much, but as a believer, the Lord is your shepherd. And that means you have a God who hears you, the power of love behind you, the Holy Spirit within you, in all of heaven ahead of you. You have grace for every sin, direction for every turn, a light for every dark place, and an anchor for every storm. In short, you have everything you need. What you have can't be lost in a flood. It can't be foreclosed on by the bank. It can't be touched by COVID-19 or cancer. And it can't be stolen by robbers. Nothing can separate you from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. A man went to see his pastor after a financial collapse, and he lamented, I've lost everything. The pastor said, oh, so you've lost your faith? Oh, no, I, I still have my faith. Oh, then you've, you've lost your character? No, I still have my character. Have you lost your salvation? No, I, I'm still saved by Christ. And then the pastor observed, well, it seems to me that you haven't lost any of the things that really matter. When we say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, we're saying, no matter what happens, I have all that really matters in Christ Jesus, my good shepherd. If God did nothing more than send his son so that I might be delivered from my sins, so that his spirit might live in me to guide me and comfort me, so that he could prepare a place for me in heaven, so that where he is I might be also, if that's all God has, has ever done for me, it would be enough. The cancer may not go away. I may never be rich or famous or popular, but it will but it'll be enough. I'll be content, whatever my circumstances, because the Lord is my shepherd and his loving grace is enough. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, help us to find the peace that comes from knowing that we can trust our lives in your hands. Thank you for loving us and caring for us and help us to rest in you, even when we may not know the path on which you are leading us. May we be content to know that you are with us and encouraged to know that we can do all things through the strength you give us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Until the next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace, now and forevermore. Amen.